YouTubers, Charles Rowe here. Uh, thank you for watching today's tutorial on color correction. Uh, as you can see here, I have a picture of the Taj Mahal uh, with a picture uh, behind it of some, you know, clouds with a, a lens flare. Or actually, the, the the sun was so bright that it, you know, created like some kind of like lens flare. Uh, both pictures I obviously found on the internet just using uh, a Google search. Uh, so you can use whatever pictures you want, or you can actually use a video. Um, but I decided to mix it up a bit. I decided to show people how you can also um, use After Effects for uh, graphic editing for images rather than just video. Uh, so without further ado, I'll show you how I created this. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new composition. Uh, I made a 1280 by 720, a typical video file. Uh, and press OK. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two layers and copy them and paste them right here. Let the rendering go through. Sometimes it can take a little bit. Uh, let's re-layer it. Okay, and now let me show you exactly what has happened here. Um, I'll go ahead and turn the exposure off on the building. I'll also turn the rotor brush off. This is the original image. Um, and right here, I will go ahead and take the levels off. Actually, I'll go ahead and delete the levels so that I can show you how they work individually. All right, so the first thing you need to do is drag your images into your composition. As you see here, um, we have our Taj Mahal. Uh, if I uh, deselect the layer, you'll see we have um, the clouds and uh, the, the sun. And you see it's rotated because I rotated it just for effect so that once the final image is done, um, you know, being worked on, I, I made sure that the light was perfectly uh, behind the building, giving it the correct light cast it was supposed to get. Uh, one thing you're going to notice on the building are these little um, white dots or light dots. Well, there's one right here, one right here, one here. That's pretty much because the sun is actually in this area bouncing onto the building. But, you know, um, you got to cheat it somehow. Um, so, so first thing we do is we got to rotoscope this. I've already taught you how to do rotoscoping if you look back in one of my previous tutorials. So I'm only going to turn the rotoscoping on um, and not waste any time to do that. As you can see, I got rid of the top parts on the building, uh, like the little pointy pieces. Uh, you see right here. I got rid of these because I didn't want to rotoscope those and put them inside the shot. Um, I wanted to kind of actually change it up a bit. So I kind of got rid of the antennas and just got rid of that and just kept the ball so it could be my own little building. Um, and then I obviously have the sky in the background. Now um, I wanted to drop down the color uh, or the exposure on the building just a little bit so that uh, the color correction would work out in the end. Um, and I always drop exposure on a lot of things that I film because I always feel like everything is brighter than it needs to be. So uh, I'll just go ahead and turn that back on. Um, but in order to drop the exposure, um, you're going to want to click your layer, go to Effect, Color Correction, and click on uh, exposure. It's somewhere over here, right there. You want to click on exposure and then it'll open up into your effects palettes or your effects controls and then you can manipulate the exposure, the offset, or the gamma correction. Uh, I just simply drop the gamma correction down to 0.85. Um, the original, which is at 1, is just a little lighter. So let's go ahead and drop that back down to 1.85. I mean 0.85. Um, and now we have to officially color correct the sky. I want the sky to be color corrected and not the building because I want the, the hues in the sky to match the colors in the, the building. I like the colors in the building a lot more. As you can see, it was kind of like a 300 effect. It was more yellow than red, uh, but that's the kind of effect we're going to go for. So you want to click this layer, go to Effect, Color Correction, and click Levels. All right. Actually, I'm still on the Taj Mahal, so I'll go ahead and delete that and go to the Clouds layer. Effect. And actually, it's once you click the effect, uh, it shows you right here under your effects the most recent effect you just used. So you just click that, uh, and it pops up into your effects controls. And now we have to um, alter uh, the sky in individual colors. So we have to alter the red, the alter the green, and the blue. And to see that accurately, you want to go to this icon right here. It says Show Channel or Color Management Settings. Click that, and let's view the red hues. Then you want to go here into your um, effects controls, click RGB, and go down to red. And now you can manipulate the red controls, uh, the input black for the red, the um, output black for the red, however you need to uh, uh, you know, change the, the numbers to make everything work. So 
we're gonna change the input to let's see let's move it around okay yeah we need to make it a little light um, I want to drop it to about 35 that looks good um, try to mix some of the dark hues um, with the the shadows in here we don't want to make it too dark because in the sky it's gonna be like extremely dark and then the building's gonna be kind of light so try to make it look as realistic as possible uh, we could always go back into it once we're done um, just to make sure everything looks right but um, go ahead and change your uh, your color management to green and change your level to green and now let's go ahead and manipulate that we'll go ahead and bring the input black up make it a little dark so we can get like the darkness in the window uh, just kind of like slide it up I like right there it looks good okay see so try to match this darkness kind of like with the darkness in here and in this window and then match like some of the the grays in here with the sky and then we're gonna do the blue like so and now we just gotta lighten up um, or actually darken up the sky so that it can match with the lightness of the building uh, by doing that we gotta do a few things uh, let's go ahead and bring the input up to about 50 or so let's see um, I like it right there and then let's go ahead and drop the output down um, let's drop it down to that looks kinda good yeah I like that alright now let's go ahead and see how it looks in its entirety you wanna um, go back to the color management and select RGB and there you go now you can see some of the yellows and the peaches and the greens and the reds are being brought out just like in the Taj Mahal um, and then the sky obviously got darker, which is okay because now we're going to crush the color with a nice yellow solid, um, add a nice adjustment layer, and then add um, a nice little vignette because you know I love to do vignettes. So let's go ahead and uh, go to Layer, New, Solid, and we're going to make our color uh, kind of like a deep yellow. Um, let's see how we should make this look. Let's... uh. Drop it down just a little bit. Um, right there looks good. Well, let's see. Uh, no. Um, I want to, let's see, 80, 86, and 72. That looks good. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, drop this down to about 10% and change it to a classic color burn. That'll burn the colors a little bit. Actually, let's bring this up to 15%. Okay, now we need to create a uh, layer, new adjustment layer. And if you have Video Copilot, you can actually um, use one of these presets. If you don't, uh, it's actually going to make things a lot more difficult for you. Um, so I recommend you uh, go to videocopilot.net and download their uh, Filmagic Pro presets. It will help you out a lot. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do that by going to your effects, preset, effects and presets palette. Um, type in underscore. Uh, and then you'll see all the different um, presets pop up and scroll down until you hit Saint. Click and drag that over top of the adjustment layer and let it render. Boom. All right now you have kind of like a 300 effect. See like the building right here in the top, it's brighter, it's darker over here, it's really dark in here because there's no light hitting it. It's perfect, it's beautiful, but it's a little too crushed. I don't want this crushed. So let's go ahead and go to the opacity by pressing the letter T. And let's drop the opacity down to 90. See how that looks. Okay, let's drop it down to 80. I kind of like that. Let's see, 75. All right, not too bad. You can barely notice it, but an editor's eye is one of the most um, amazing eyes ever. And if you can see the change, um, you will. I'm serious. Your your gain will uh, increase immensely. So um, never take into uh, consideration or never doubt that the image um, looks good until you are sure that the image looks its best. And when we're going to finish, you'll see what I mean. Um, let's go ahead and go to Layer, New, Add a Solid so we can create the black vignette going around uh, the image. Uh, simply just drag it all the way down, press OK. Um, 
go here to mask and like I had mentioned in a previous tutorial actually one of my first tutorials that was a masking tutorial all you gotta do is select the mask and then double click and it will automatically create um, a mask in the shape of the mask that you selected um, so we got an oval uh, set our, um, our layer property or the mask property to subtract um, press the letter F at, you know first select uh, the black solid then press the letter F and then we're gonna mask it to about 200 um, I love this mask already uh, you see it's really uh, cropping out some of the, the dark edges uh, or some of the edges of the, the the picture really well but it's too dark um, and instead of extending the mask out too much we're gonna drop down the opacity to about 75 and there you go um, that is color correcting mixed in with a little bit of color grading and rotoscoping. I obviously didn't te uh, show you how to do the rotoscoping in this tutorial. If you just look back in another tutorial, you'll see how to rotoscope it, but um, it's, it's that simple. You can use the same technique for images and video. Obviously, video, you'll have to apply motion tracking to make sure, you know, the sky, you know, syncs up with the building or however, you know, if you have a camera wiggle, uh, you need to make sure that uh, the, the sky moves with the, the camera wiggle. Or if you're just putting a person right inside, like, like this little building, anything. You want to make sure you use uh, motion tracking. But thank you for watching today's tutorial. If you have any questions, please send me a message at contact at charlesroad.com. I'd love to answer any of the questions you may have. So thank you and have a wonderful day.